welcome back to another episode of Four Foot Friday, where today well, I'm going to be saying my NBA rant on about how players, you know, they don't want just money in the NBA. They want to win the, they want to win games. They want to win a ring because there's a misconception in the NBA with, you know, Stephen Curry making 40 mil per year, Blake Griffin making four, uh, almost 40 mil per year. Of just about, and you know, James Harden making just about 45 million. You know, those types of crazy numbers where players are making even, you know, not so good players in the NBA. Well, not even not so good, but like not as good as like a James Harden or something like Solomon Hill, let's say, making 12 mil per year, making 15 mil per year. Even Alan Crabb making about 17 mil per year. And I have my I had my NBA rant last week on um, bad contracts in the NBA, but today. I'm going to be almost ranting on the fact that um, there's a misconception in the NBA that players just want money. They'll go to it. If a team gives a player enough money, they'll go to the team. But there's other things that affect that. One, is a team winning? Two, do they want to play there? You know, we see players in the NBA like, I want to go to this. If they have a no trade clause, I want to go to this team. I want to go to this team. And players are like, if they get traded and um, players have a no trade clause and they get traded to a place and they go, no, I don't want to be traded there. Maybe it's a winning team, however, they just don't want to move there. And even in free agency, we see, you know, I'm going to show one example with Derrick Rose, but there's many other examples how great players will take a pay cut just so they can win games on a good team. So let's get started into this. I will be doing two points which um, one of the points is basically going to be lifestyle and where a player might want to play, and the second reason on um, why a player might take a pay cut for winning games. So my first point is indeed the lifestyle of a player. And what many people don't think is um, an NBA player, as a basketball player, you're not just entertaining people. You're not just making money for entertaining people. It's your job. So... You know, a person might go if they're making good money, you know, I want to be in New York. I don't want to be in Texas anymore. I want to be relocated in New York. Or it could be, I'm working in England, you know, I want to be moved to America, that type of thing. And um, it's not always, you know, a player wants that money because, you know, maybe there's a better charities in the area where they can donate to. We see a lot of NBA players donate to charities and whatnot because they make so much money in their lifetime. And um, there, there, there's definitely a few exceptions of, you know, players that want money versus players that want to win. Allen Iverson, obviously, he gambled all his money and um, he, he went broke. And um, so there's a few exceptions. However, you know, the players, they want to go to a team that has a good lifestyle, good locker room. If they're making 30 mil a year, but they're not in a good locker room. They're not, you know, eating as well as they want. Like, they don't have that, like, the temperature, like, what the climate there is. Because, obviously, if you're playing in San Antonio, that's a lot different than if you're playing in New York. Because, one, there's such a, like, there's such a different, you know, temperature in Texas than there is in New York. And then the other thing, too, with that is that, you know, Texas, there's such a smaller market than in New York. There's a large market. So... That, that's an interesting point, you know, on the market size, you know, the temperature, there's so many points that go into it. You know, what restaurants are near there, uh, you know, houses that are near there. And there's so many different points that factor into if an NBA player wants to go to X team versus Y team, right? And um, I'm going to be going into my second point now, which is my main point. And I'm so glad that Derrick Rose... Signed a one-year, $2.1 million contract because it really proves my point on NBA players want to win. Because Derrick Rose went to the Cleveland Cavaliers. He could very well be the backup point guard on that Cavaliers team if Kyrie Irving stays. Derrick Rose took a massive pay cut. He could have been making 25 mil per year, for all we know. But instead, he's making 2 mil per year. That is the veteran's minimum just so he could win games just so he could be in nba finals contending for an nba championship and possibly winning an nba championship right players want to win derrick rose wants to win 
win now situation. Win now when you're 30 years old, or in Derrick Rose's case, he's 28 years old. 2.1 mil, veterans minimum. But yes, you understand players like Matt Barnes, you know, when you're getting to that 36, whatever, you have two years left and you just want to win. A veteran might join the best team in the league just so they could win a ring. It's the same thing we've seen with Jose Calderon. Uh, even Darren Williams had that opportunity. Uh, you also have, you know, Jeff Green is trying to do that. There, there's many players, even Omar Kasipi and uh, Nick Young. So there's many players that do want to just win a ring at, you know, the latter stages of their career. But Derrick Rose is 28 years old. He still has more years in his prime. But he took a 2.1 mil per year contract. And, um... Basically, we're going to continue, we're going to, you know, continue from this Derrick Gross 2.1 mil contract, but we're going to put that to a halt and we're going to talk about a little about Kobe Bryant, how about in an interview with, on NBA on TNT with, um, you know, Ernie Johnson, he said his biggest regret was not winning the sixth ring in his NBA career. You know, because if, when he says it, he, you know, when he says about the fifth ring, he, you know, it's almost like he's fine with it, but really, is he that fine with it? Because he kind of like pauses a little bit and, and you know, that type of thing. And um, you really see how, he wants. He wanted to win that sixth ring, and there's other players. You go on NBA on TNT. Listen to it. Like Shaquille O'Neal just trolls uh, Charles Barkley every single show about how Charles Barkley hasn't won a ring yet. And we can even talk about Draymond Green here. He said uh, Draymond Green actually said to Charles Barkley, "Don't talk rings. You never won one in your career." So as you can see, players, when they're talking about other players, they talk about the amount of rings that a player will have. You, you think about it, in today's NBA, we think, mm, yeah, Carmelo Anthony, he hasn't won a ring before, so he's not as good as, let's say, Chris Bosh, right? And it's just that type of thing that um, Chris Bosh has had a better career than Carmelo Anthony. If Carmelo Anthony won two rings, Chris Bosh won two rings, let's say they both won two rings, right? Then Carmelo Anthony might actually have that better career because when you talk about how an NBA player is, you know, that good, you talk about a lot of the time with the amount of what rings. And, um, you know, let's talk about another point, which is the, gr the greatest player of all time. We're going to talk about, um, uh, what's it called? Michael Jordan, the greatest player ever to walk on an NBA basketball court. He won six championships. But what was amazing about how he won those six championships? Guess what? He won, and you probably know this, he won six rings out of the six championships he went to. So, like, you think about that now, right? Think about it now with the comparison between LeBron James and Michael Jordan. Who's the better player, Michael Jordan or LeBron James? Now, you obviously are going to think, oh, Michael Jordan, right? But guess why? Michael Jordan won six rings. If LeBron James was 100% when he went to the finals, and, you know, he didn't lose to teams like, you know, the San Antonio Spurs. If he didn't lose to the Warriors. Then he could be considered the greatest of all time if he went to six finals and won six. If he went to the final six times and won it all six times. But he hasn't. He's lost to teams like the Warriors and... You need to be, if you're considered the greatest all time, you need to be that clutch player, that, you know, player that's going to win you the game. And Michael Jordan did that. Remember against the Utah Jazz in that closing game of that series? Turnaround jumper, buzzer beater, wins it. 
It's that type of thing. It's that type of clutchness that we love to see on an NBA court. And it's that type of thing that, you know, we talk about rings. And therefore, it leads to the point, the main point that I'm talking about in this NBA rant, which is on this thing really affects where a player goes to. If Kevin Durant knows he's going to win a ring at Golden State, he's going to go to Golden State. And that is why he went to Golden State. If he would have stayed at Oklahoma City Thunder, which he would have been totally loyal to do that, obviously he did a full 360 on them. He did a full 360 on them going to the Golden State Warriors, which everyone thought was, you know, not so smart of him. We all didn't like him to do that because the rich team was getting richer, that type of thing. However... He won a ring. And that is what a player loves more than anything, to win a ring. Right? This year, in free agency, Kevin Durant took a massive, massive pay cut. He could have got 45 mil per year, but he took a massive pay cut just so he could win more rings with this Golden State Warriors team, with possibly the greatest team we've ever seen walk on the NBA court. He took a pay cut just so they could re-sign players like Stephen Curry and in the future re-sign players like your Clay Thompson, like your Draymond Green. He could have gone back to Oklahoma City. He could have gone to the Washington Wizards. He could have gone to the Boston Celtics. He could have gone to any NBA team and gotten 45 mil per year. But he decided to go to the Golden State Warriors and take a massive, massive pay cut. And guess what? Next year, he'll probably win his second ring. And that's why players want to win a ring. 2.1 mil Derrick Rose. Guess what? He wants to win games. He hasn't been on a winning team since the Chicago Bulls when they were good, when he won in that MVP season. But he hasn't won a ring. So he took... Instead of getting a max contract, he took a pay cut. Pay cut. Pay cut. Derek Rose took a pay cut? You'd think he'd want to go 20 mil more than his contract now, but guess what? He wants to win. He wants to win now with the Cavaliers. And how is he going to win now? By joining the Cavaliers. So it's just that type of thing. There's so many effects into where a player wants to go where a player wants to go, you know, based on education, um, if they have kids, where a player will, or where their kid will learn the best, and, um, you know, just the area that they want to be around. Maybe you want to, uh, you don't want to be in that city with New York where there's a lot of, you know, danger or whatever where, to your to your family. Maybe you don't want to go to that New York area where there's been a lot of, you know, terrorist attacks. Maybe you want to go to, like, Utah. Utah, they haven't had a lot of, you know, violence. Maybe you don't want to go to Orlando, that Orlando Magic team, because there's been terrorist attacks in Florida lately. And um, it's just that type of thing that really affects where a player wants to go, where, where a player wants to go. And, um, yeah, so it's just those types of things. You know, climate, uh, where a player, you know, what a team, you know, what their training resources resources look like, you know, where a player really does their workouts and whatnot, and but really what the team shape looks like, what the team, you know, who they're going to be playing with, you know, will they be playing with the greatest player of all time or will they be playing with Timothy Mozgov, that type of thing. So... Yeah, that's going to be it for today's episode. Thank you for watching, and um, let me know what you want, what you think of this in the comment section. Hit the like button if you did like this video. Hit the dislike button if you didn't like this video. But let please let me know in the comment section why you did not like this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, and thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good day.